And also I'm interested in the teaching profession and who is accepted to become a teacher and different ways that that's going to start happening now. If you have a master's in teaching, how strongly do you agree with the following statement? My master's program helped me become a better teacher. Schools that work had earned a right to be at the table, and master teachers who've been involved in those schools had a right to not only be part of the conversation, but in many cases to be part of directing the conversation. Teachers are adults and they do have a choice. They can go somewhere else. The kids don't have a choice. They either graduate or don't graduate. All of us should welcome not only healthy competition, but the cross-fertilization of ideas and findings. Uh, goodness knows we need it. We boil it down to you don't graduate unless you help your kids to uh, grow one year in one year's time. The challenge there is really figuring out what are the multiple ways that we can look at teachers' performance. It's a team sport and we have to start to conceptualize how we build the skills of teachers to collaborate. How do you coach teachers the best? How do you train them the best? Fly by observations and hope for the best is not a coherent model. How do we really help our participants connect what they're talking about in their nightly session to what that looks like in the classroom? Instead of people who want to be teachers and view it as a lifetime career and not necessarily as something you want to do for three to five years. And I think it's justifiable to invest in those people in a different way because they're going to be the long-term leaders who may become APs and principals in a school. So I think residencies are appropriate. If we put more of that money into having student teaching, mentoring, um, it's not an expensive program because we're already losing so much money from just having to rehire and retrain new teachers. Networks such as Bob's Wonderful Networks are training their own teachers. Um, and the, the, the issue there is... I'll have a new apartheid. Um, as schools develop relationships with teacher preparation programs, what about the schools that maybe haven't gotten in, the, you know, gotten their foot in the door with those programs, with the ones that are on the cutting edge, the forefront of innovation? Where do the current master teachers come from to help reinvent teacher preparation? How are you preparing teachers of young children for math and science? We haven't had a conversation about a real curriculum, about what's worth reading and listening to and seeing and studying. And until we do, uh, I think that, that we handicap the intelligence and the energy and the enthusiasm that's here and that's in this room and that's around us in the city and we insult teachers and most importantly, we undermine kids. And as so often happens, now I'm leaving with more questions. E3 is an opportunity for people to get together and share ideas and how could you not want to be a part of that? This really provides me with an opportunity to kind of you know, understand what the different voices are, the different philosophies are. And hopefully even you know, have my voice be heard. I like hearing ideas from all across the spectrum and having a respectful dialogue with colleagues. So I had to join. To learn more about this event and other ways you can elevate your voice, visit educatorsforexcellence.org.